Did you know these games are two of the most successful game franchises in history? There is little action, almost no violence, the graphics are average at best, and yet people have sunk countless hours on them. How can this be? Today, we are going to tell you the secret behind these games. Remember when you went to school and it was all about schedules and having to attend classes that may or may not interest you? You had little control over it. You didn't choose at what time teachers gave a lesson or where those lessons took place. Real life is usually like that. We don't get to choose a lot of things in our life. It is imposed on us by external forces. We may have to send a financial report on Monday before 5pm or we have to attend a meeting at 7am. Also, we have tasks and responsibilities in our personal life that need to be attended to. On the other hand, there are things that we do out of our own accord. They come from our own internal motivation. Maybe you like to go swimming lessons or painting. Maybe you like to go hiking. It feels different, right? That is because you choose to do that. It makes you feel good and nobody commands you to do these things. This is what autonomy is all about. You being the casual agent of your own life. It's about actions that come from inside us, from our own internal motivations, things that we choose to do out of our own accord. Now, you might be tempted to think that autonomy is the same as freedom, but it's not. Freedom, in essence, means free of constraints, to be able to do whatever you want to do without limitation. But autonomy doesn't mean just being free of constraints. It is about taking actions that align with your inner self, with your preferences and your own unique person. The fact that you can act without constraints in a particular situation doesn't necessarily mean you are acting out of your own authenticity and desires. Naturally, we feel great when we are acting autonomously. It's a deep need within every human being. Great video games tap into this basic human need. They make you feel self-governed, volitional, in contrast to feeling controlled. So how do video games facilitate the experience of autonomy? A video game satisfies autonomy needs when it provides the player with opportunities where he or she perceives value. Choice is a common mechanism used since not only the player feels he is in control, but also it's likely one of the options provided will represent some kind of value to the player. It's no surprise then that modern games are usually filled with choices in an attempt to satisfy the player's need for autonomy. Let's look at an example. This is World of Warcraft, the most successful massive multiplayer online RPG. One great thing about it is that as many other RPGs, it lets you choose who you will be in the world. You can choose to be a human or an elf, a wizard or a warrior, among many other options. In this instance, you experience autonomy by freely choosing an identity whose features you value. RPGs are also great at giving the player many options on what to do. You may choose to do a mission that you find interesting while at the same time avoid others that don't catch your attention. Maybe you personally don't find it exciting to catch a thief that stole a valuable jewel and instead choose to avenge the death of an innocent villager. Strategy games are filled with choices too. There may be hundreds of ways to approach the same problem. In XCOM, you are presented with different scenarios where you must choose how to deal with the alien invaders. Should your sniper go to the top of the building or should he take his chances and shoot from his current position? Should you research better armor for your soldiers or should you buy a new combat robot to support them on missions? It's all up to you. Now, it's very important to understand that just having choices doesn't necessarily provide a feeling of autonomy. The choices have to present alternatives that have value for the person. Imagine that in the world of Warcraft, the player is only presented with the choice of either being a warrior or a paladin. Some people will be okay with this, but other people will feel neither alternative has value for them, since they don't enjoy playing a fighter character. If no choice seems interesting or represents some kind of perceived value to a person, then they won't experience feelings of autonomy. Going further, 
There doesn't even need to be the possibility of multiple options for a person to experience autonomy. If the person is presented with only one alternative, but that alternative has value to them, then they will still experience autonomy. Remember what we said at the beginning, autonomy is about taking actions that align with your inner self and your own values. So if you are only presented with one option, but that unique option aligns with your preferences, then you experience autonomy even with a lack of alternatives. Having multiple options available facilitates the experience of autonomy, simply because you are more likely to find something that aligns with your own unique self. Take for example the Batman games. In most of them, the player doesn't have the opportunity to choose a character other than Batman himself. Still, the player may experience feelings of autonomy since it is likely that the only available option aligns with his own values and desires. Also, in most video games, the player doesn't get to choose the path that the character goes through, but if he personally endorses that path, then he will probably still experience autonomy. Usually there are three approaches to satisfy autonomy needs in a player, identity, activity and strategy. We have talked about identity, it's about letting the player choose his character, how it dresses, its virtual personality and such. Activity is about the player choosing what he does within the game, and strategy is about giving the player freedom on what solutions and tactics he uses to overcome the challenges. So what kind of games are best at providing autonomy? As you may have guessed, open world games excel at satisfying this basic need since they combine all the dimensions mentioned earlier. It is not surprising why the Red Dead Redemption series provides such enjoyment. The player can choose how the main character dresses, what kind of horse he rides, where he goes, how he solves missions, etc. At this point, we should be able to see why The Sims is such a popular game. It's like an alternative life where you can freely direct every action of your avatar according to your own personal preferences and desires, with the added benefit that you can experiment without any consequence or regret. On the other hand, while Minecraft is not meant to simulate real life, it provides an endless sense of choice and possibility, a blank canvas, which lets you build things that come from your unique internal motivations. So when designing a game, strive to make room for autonomy needs. Make the player feel he is the captain of his own ship. Ideally, there should be plentiful options for self-expression and to make meaningful choices. The goal is to provide an environment where the player can express or pursue his very own values and desires. If no choices are provided, then strive to make sure the player will likely endorse the path you have put in front of him. Don't worry if you still feel a bit confused about how autonomy works and how it is implemented within a video game. It's a complex topic which we will explore in future videos. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. Until the next one.